Jacksonville, Florida. You already yeah, know what time it is. Duval right. County. Yeah. Jack Town. You, you know already one. know what time it is, man. It's the 85 South Show, September 11th. Where we going? The Basta Veterans Arena. We coming hey. live, so get your tickets. You already know what it is, yeah. man. I was just there a couple weeks ago at Dracula's Lair, and all y'all said y'all was coming, man. So make sure you get your ticket, September 11th. 11th. Jacksonville, Florida. Duval County. What are we doing when we going down to Duval? 85 uh -huh. South Dakota's podcast. September 11th. Duval Jacksonville, Florida. Jacksonville. Jacksonville. We coming bike. Duval, we coming bike. September 11th. Jacksonville, we coming bike. Duval County. Bike Star Veterans Arena. Get your tickets. We see y'all on September 11th. No, for real. Everybody, you only, you only oh, work with good motherfuckers. Oh, shit. Uh, hey man, that Everybody good. on this list good in the motherfucker. Pink. Pink, she don't, she good as fuck. Man, pink good than the motherfucker. Yeah. Nigga, you done work with so many people, this shit just say various artists. <laughs> <laughs> just uh, like everybody came through. <laughs> and then you gonna ask me why why we want you on here. We could just ask you about one song and that'd be a whole episode. Big boy, bow wow. This ain't gonna work with big boy and outcast. <laughs> <laughs> that was two different times. <laughs> the Dungeon Family. That's like 75 people if you really know Atlanta. <laughs> That's Outcast, Future, TLC, Usher, Rico Wade. Basically, if you ever recorded a hit song in Atlanta, you had to be around somebody in the Dungeon Family. You know how they had that thing where it was like, Everybody in the last 15 NBA Finals then been Shaq teammate. <laughs> Nigga, every piece of good shit that there ever came out of Atlanta, somebody from the Dungeon family was over there. Yeah, that, that's real shit, actually. That's yeah. real shit? Yeah, that's real. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think we ground this shit, man. We, we, we from it, so it's, it's it feel different. Man, I'm just looking at the list. This ain't even, the list cut off. It's still 10 years of shit that you done that don't nobody even know. Even the internet was like, man, ask him. So catch from after 2011, man, tell me some more shit. Man, um, shit. Went to Atlantic. Um, see how normal this shit is to you? It's like, it's like you switched jobs. Went to Atlantic. Um, what we do at Atlantic? We, we sold a lot of records over there. Yeah, That's um, one of the biggest record companies in the world. And and reconnected with Pharrell over there like that. Me and him. When did you connect with him? You're just going to start the story when y'all reconnected. Wait a minute. <laughs> Welcome back to the 85 South <laughs> Show. <laughs> you see the shorts on the table. You see the hoodies. Be great. This is one of the greatest. <laughs> I'm looking at a list of all your favorite songs, and you didn't even know the KP has something to do with it. Welcome to the trap, KP. Hey man, appreciate it. Come man. on, man. Look, man. we not even worthy. What's up, Marvin? We done had a lot of Atlanta legends come through here, and don't act like you ain't one of them. You be downplaying all this shit, but you got to come over here and give us your version of the pieces of Atlanta history that you done been a part of. Look at this list. Do you remember this shit? Yeah, all of it. All right, bet. And then you got to tell me about the shit that ain't on here. <laughs> Like, let me see, um... So you said you yeah, reconnected with, with Pharrell. How did you connect with him? How did you start all of this? Um, Clearly it was around 1990. No, this shit hit in 96, yeah, so, so you had to be doing it about 93 at least. So, no, nah, 90, 90 what, having to go to school went to Tri-Cities where, like, outcast. See escaped. what I'm saying? You even um, went to a historical Atlanta high school. Okay, yeah. I'm from Vi DC City. went over there for a minute. Really? That's the one he got through out of, I think. So here's the thing. So I did a bunch of that. Like I um, went to Mays. Got they asked me to leave. Um, I know for a fact they went to Mays. Yeah. That, okay. District. They don't. They, they don't want everybody there. Um, so um, went to Lake Show. Oh, I did a, a tour. I went to all the high schools. Okay, and, basically. And in doing that, I met a bunch of people. But okay. I, I graduated from Tri City, which is where Outkast, both of them went. Candy, Keenan from Saturday Night Live. It's like a bunch of people went in this time period. Exactly. And all of us were working. We all knew we wanted to do shit. It was like talent show kids. And yeah, and, and we started working. And at that time, LA and Babyface and Pebbles moved to Atlanta. 
like they met T Boz, who's a friend of, of mine, who went to, she was a TLC, I'm sorry, T Boz from TLC. Right. Um, she was my homeboy who was in the group with me, his brother's girlfriend. So it was like all these weird, everybody was just randomly connected. Right. And then, you know, and, and they got a deal. And on one of their video shoots, um, they were doing an audition for the video, Baby, Baby, Baby. And um, Tion was like, yo, y'all should come down. Bring the group, y'all see if y'all can, we can slide, I'm gonna figure out how to get y'all, <laughs> uh, if I can slide y'all in to get Pebbles to see y'all. And I brought my turntables, we set up, and Pebbles was like, well, if I'm gonna watch you, you, what you gonna do for me? And I was like, yeah, like, that's how I felt. And, and she was like, you know, like, I'm here auditioning, I, I need people for a video. Like, if you'll be in the video, then yeah, I'll watch you. And I was like, oh, yeah, bet, yeah, hell yeah, I'll take one for the team. I didn't know what it meant, so it wasn't like a, a thing yet. And um, so anyway, she was like, you're gonna be Chili's boyfriend in the video. And yeah, okay. And that's how it's, and, that's, and so from then Who on. Who don't want that job? Yeah, right, that, I was like, all right, that, cool. So that, and that's how it started. Like, we got pulled in, Pebbles brought me in and it kind of opened up the back door so I could see like how shit worked. Like the first time I ever met with her, she had me come down to a video set, like an editing bay, where she was editing like a TLC video and like explaining to me why certain shit was happening. So I was like, you know, I was always intrigued by that part. And eventually she was like, you know what, you really do have an interest and in, in a knack for the understanding because you speak both, both sides. Like you ain't really tripping like like on, on people who work at the record company, like thinking you, know, you gotta be a different kind of way, but you also are, are delivering the message, you know, in a way that it's understood. Mm -hmm. So yeah, she was like, you should, you should be with LA. Like you should work with LA. So she's the person who put me on with, with LA Reed, who brought me in to start doing A&R. So that's how I got in as an executive. Man, and you just been turning that shit up every, look at this shit. Somebody find the other years. <laughs> Can't find the other years, man. <laughs> Tony Braxton, bro. That's you worked on one of the biggest songs. Yeah, you make of me our high. generation. Well, that that was. I mean, like I, the, the the hard part about taking credit for shit like that is like she was already Tony Braxton. Like, oh, exactly, but you came when that happened. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, bet. No, That's one of her I, biggest but, songs. But I was able to like just connect some shit like my homeboy Bryce who was in this group Groove Theory was like they dope producer. as hell as fuck so he producing and Babyface like I'm at LaFace so I'm, I'm connected to Babyface so I'm like man it'll be hard if Babyface wrote over one of your tracks like one of them hard ass records and he wrote you're making me hot for that <laughs> you just, would you see how you tell the shit so normal man that, this is fucking crazy <laughs> You know how good you have to be at music for Babyface to even talk to you? <laughs> well, no. Nah, actually, you know, you just got to not be scared of Babyface. But I'm saying, like, then when you're not scared of him, you, you have to really you, deliver you, some you, good you, shit. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. is Babyface. Yeah, he Babyface. He writes songs like, yeah. Yeah, end of the road. Sing that. It's over. Yeah, can we talk? You can't even name all the shit that Babyface. No, nah, you can't. Yeah, so that's why this shit, like, well, I can't trip, because I know Babyface, I see him, I, like, the niggas I know are, like, really, like... Bro, if he come to the trap, we shutting this bitch down. We not even gonna record no, nothing else in here. They gotta move. We, we, we <laughs> found a new location, bro. <laughs> yeah, y'all actually might want to just go to his house or some shit, like... Bro, nah, because then we not gonna want to go back to our house. <laughs> his shit way nice, too nice. I wouldn't even feel nice enough to go over baby face house. <laughs> hey, nah, man. Those where you at? I ain't coming. <laughs> <laughs> it's baby face, man. I'm not coming. Hey, man. Baby face cool. I believe that, man. Like you know, you from like Ohio. Okay. Like they, they, they just, they some dudes, man. Like they really cool as hell. Who is they? Joke. Is Babyface in some more Yeah, like LA, LA and Babyface. Oh, okay. My, my, I thought you. Oh, my, I thought yeah, baby, like, I thought when you met Babyface, you had to meet like a group all the Babyface. <laughs> like, hey, we are Babyface. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you made it sound. Like, yeah, like it's a group of niggas. Yeah, they cool. Man. Like Bruno Mars. Cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like it. It's a group. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. fuck with Bruno Mars, man. That nigga, him and Anderson Pack, they got some. Yeah, that's it. Like, I, like, here's the thing, I love Anderson Pack. Anderson, his shit is dope, dope. Yeah. 
I, I rock with, with Bruno. He's, he's a great, he's a great entertainer. A great and I feel player. like he is the perfect mix of everybody. He is, man. And that's what it is. It's like he's a, he's a, yeah, he's like a little super, He's every super nationality. He yeah. could be anybody. And he's like, Bloop. Like he just, he fit everywhere, bro. That nigga jam. He could be at a Floyd Mayweather fight. He could be at the Manny Pacquiao Play, birthday Playboy party. Mansion. Playboy, the Playboy Mansion. The Playboy Mansion. The Soul Train Award. The BT Super Bowl. Awards. Bruno Mars. He can show up at Gucci Man's spot. He can be with Gucci Man. Gucci Man and a Bruno Mars. That's a hit. But they got one. They got name. one. Hi. Exactly. Hi. The, exactly. Gucci Man and Bruno Mars. Wow. Yeah, Bruno. They need a whole album. Actually, I just want Bruno to do. He should do like an album with everybody he like. He should. I think he should do one song with everybody in the industry. He's multicultural like that. Yeah. He get. Don't worry about that. Just mean the chicken rib. <coughs> oh shit! What? What we got? I don't know what the fuck that mean. What happened? The light died or some shit. Whatever. It's a sign though that we on the right path. Bruno Mars can do music with anybody. Light bulb idea. I get it. And man, what type of advice do you give people when they ask you about the music industry? Because clearly you've seen it go from actual physical hard copies to a digital age. And you know, it's only a few people that have really broke through on the digital age. Like, Man, I, and, this, and this ain't because of the shirt, but it's like, really, it's like, be, like I would normally used to say be dope. Just be dope. Like, that shit will cut through and get you to have the opportunity to learn all the other shit. Right. But have something that nobody else can do. Like, if you can fuck around and do something that... that Some intangible shit. Intangible shit. And I'm like, and nobody can tell you... <coughs> nobody can tell you what that is. No. So it's like, but you got to be the best version of yourself. Like, you got to be cool enough with yourself to, like, receive that shit. Like, that's why people... That's why Tip is Tip. Because he really is... That's just who he is. So every message or everything that comes through is it's unadulterated because it's like he ain't putting shit on it. Keep that shit real. That's the first step to being great. Yeah. Yeah, man. And you got to be able to tune out criticism. Yeah, that, that shit, man. Listen, if you, if you ask for some advice, listen to it, filter it out, see what works for what you're trying to do. Right. Some of it might, some of it ain't. Some people don't know how to listen to advice. Uh, you got to, like, you. sometimes the whole advice might not work. Nah. Sometimes the whole advice be too big for your situation. You just gotta take the part. Yeah, like, oh. Like, this part work. I ain't fucking with that yet. But yeah. later on, you gotta remember the whole shit, <laughs> but you can only apply the shit that work for you. But that's the part, like, okay, and be aware of your, like, self awareness, bro. In the moment. Yeah, you gotta be aware all the time. Like, if you wanna do this, cause it's, it's, you're in a world of creative people. It's people making up shit all the time. Exactly. And you gotta figure out how to work ride this wave of creates creativity but remain real in it right and that shit was a whole nother level of awareness like i just assume like if you surfing like the awareness you have with the water you gotta have that kind of that level of concentration and awareness riding this shit don't you hate this shit when you had in the capri sun star won't come out yeah because they know you can do to make it seem cool you gotta get some scissors <laughs> like somebody there you go shit I hate that. That's the most uncool shit you can do Don't on this up, show. Though. But I always drink some, drink some kind of, you know, juice when a nigga starts saying real shit. Yeah, you didn't give up. I never will. That's part of my perseverance. Yep. Put that on my, on the wall by my name. Perseverance. Never give up. Never gave up. Got it out the mud. Where's the mud, by the way? Shit, I'm from Mississippi. Yeah, the, the mud, mud is everywhere. 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 Shit, my driveway. Hey man, that's D. Aries. Marvin Gaye? Yeah, he the one. Check this out. We got the same birthday. Oh shit. That's why right here. He's my official, unofficial co-host. That's what's up. We take Marvin Gaye everywhere, bro. You should, he dope. Hell yeah. What kind of shit you think you and Marvin Gaye would've got into in the studio? <laughs> Probably some Musically. Arguments. Uh, oh. Probably some arguments. No, definitely, only just arguments. I mean, cause I don't know, man. I don't know the Aries do well together in that kind of space. Who you argue with the most in the studio? All these greats. Argue with the most? Yeah. Tip. And that, and that, but I, I don't argue. We don't argue, but debates are like they're like intense. 
Like they're just about random shit. Anything. <laughs> anything. Like just cause, like just cause. That's just how. That's part of the creativity. Of, it is, but but you know, it's the reason why he can write a Ti versus Tip. Because mm. he really is, he's arguing with you to hear the whole part. Like, what's your whole point? To have an understanding. Like, I've never seen nobody argue as much <coughs> as much as him. But he does it with, with, he actually listens to the other part. Like, I think most people be arguing just to hear themselves be loud. Mm. He really trying to get, like, a real, like, con like a convicted. He's argumentative, point. though. He's... Absolutely. Who's second, then? Because I, I figured it would be him. Really? Second. Put a list of shit out. That's all we got for now. Mm. I mean, we ain't mean no disrespect. No, we know no, you no, did no, a lot of shit. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's no. all the internet allow us to have. You know, times is hard. Mm -hmm. They cutting back on everything, even information. <laughs> they get brought back down to 3G. Um, I'm telling you, when we got to the second page, they were just like, ask him. That's what it said on the bottom. Hey, man, stop. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, um, pro oh, you know what? Because we've known each other the longest, probably Outkast. Like, and not Outkast, the both of them, but me and Big Boy. For real? Yeah. So yeah. you've been all like in the creative process with them, bro. They probably got some great shit that the world never heard. Absolutely. <sighs> like, there's a version of, like, of CeeLo singing Happy. It's crazy. CeeLo Green mm -hmm. singing Happy? Yeah. If that don't never come out, we should just invite CeeLo to karaoke. Just so just, yeah, yeah. The yeah. world, do you understand how much the world need to hear that? Yeah, it's fun. It's, it's, it's great too. That that song already <laughs> sold like 12 billion copies. They should at least leak that. Nah. All right. <laughs> nah. We can't redo it and say I'm in a good <laughs> mood or nothing. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm feeling decent, <laughs> decent as hell. That's the best they gonna let a nigga feel. That's Cause right. we decent. That's about right. Don't wanna be happy, cause they'll shut the whole shit down for real. Niggas be decent. <laughs> <laughs> shit. <laughs> like that's gospel. What? Like, what? That's all of these. We can can't, we should do it. Decent. Decent. He hey man, ain't nobody got that one. <laughs> Come on, you the A and R, make that make the call. I call CeeLo. Call CeeLo. I know he'll be with the shit. He'll do it. I'm he'll gonna call do his it son here. first and then have his son tell him. And what you should do is have him do it at y'all show. Decent. Let him, let him do it live like Eric Badu did uh Tyrone. What if we fucking record the shit and it's on hard than the motherfucker? Then he send the bill and that one won't cool. be able to come out either. Damn. I mean, <laughs> sure. When he be damn. like, all right, man, I appreciate y'all fucking <laughs> yeah, with me. Oh, that was tight, that was tight, yeah. Delete that shit. <laughs> Delete all that. Nah, I think you good, I think you good. Like, you you understand, y'all like, y'all are like a big part of the culture. We ain't even know it yet. Yeah. But see, we still playing catch up. See, we still putting the whole history of the culture together. Okay. So that's why that's we had right. to bring you. Okay. Cause there's so much shit you have been a part of in Atlanta. Mm -hmm in the world that had an impact on the culture. So once we catch up with, all right, this, these are the people who was like, this the culture that we was seeing before we was a part of it. Right, okay. Look, look at how much of my favorite shit you done put on this list. So I got this platform, I gotta yeah. invite you and ask you, nigga, how, how you, how, how? Man, you know what, just be, being open to it, like that's it, man, like the, the, the real of it is I've never, put that much on it because I recognize how much goes into it. Like how many people like it take to make some shit like work for real. Yeah. That's why this, that's exactly yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah, so it's like my awareness for that makes it like not that, it's, it, it makes it to where I just wanna keep doing shit. If I see somebody doing something dope and I can help or assist, if I can put somebody together, if I can, whatever I can do to kind of amplify or, or put a, a, a amp on that, like that's what I feel like I'm supposed to do. Like, mm -hmm. but that's on some DJ shit too, because it's like that muscle of being able to like play music, see a crowd, trying to find a way to make everybody feel involved. It's like when, when you can figure that out, if you can do that in other places, it's, it's you know same feeling. How long you been DJing? 
shit since I was 13. What is that? Yeah, like I always wonder. I always wonder how how people know that it could be a DJ. Mm. So this is weird, right? So th this is probably like the, like the the most hip hop ass story like ever. So when I was like 11, 10, 11. I used to go to the airport at Atlanta, um, at Hartsfield. They used to have this shit where you can take those little carts and when you return them from like people leaving them, it would give you 25 cents. So I used to go, and we would go find all the carts, take them, get the money. They had a game room in the airport, like an arcade. So me and my cousin would go in and do this shit and play video games for like an hour. I'm playing video games one day and this dude walks up. I'm playing this kung fu game, you know, it's like a two player jump. And dude was like, yo, shorty, can I, can I play this game with you? And I'm like, you know, some weirdo shit, like, you know, not like, why? And um, so he's like, I mean, no, nah, no, nah, it's just, you know, it's, it's my game, it's my game. And I looked up and he had a necklace on and it had like Chinese lettering. So I was like, oh, that's interesting. So we're playing and I was like, what does that say? And then he was like, it was LL Cool J. <clears throat> and, and I'm like, what's that mean? And he was like, ladies love Cool J. I was like, but I, this is like, again, 10, 11, this ain't like, I don't know yet. So, but like, this is like hip hop is starting like to, to branch out. So I'm in the airport and he's, he's talking to me and I'm like, he starts breaking down and he travels the world. He's in Atlanta doing a show and he has this song, radio. No, I need a beat. And I was like, oh, I know that shit. And me and I'm like, so wait a minute, so what you doing here? And he, he's telling me all this shit. Like I travel the world, you know, I'm, you know and he's LL Cool J talking. So I'm like, a kid like, oh wow, it's like some mean Joe Green shit. <clears throat> and he's like, yo, why don't you come back? <laughs> and I don't, and it shit sound weird saying the story now, but he's like, why don't you come back and see, meet my people? And I'm like, I tell my cousin, let's go. We, and this before TSA, so you can go wherever in the airport. So we go back to the, their gate and it's him. It's like the Beastie Boys. It's like, it's like Def Jam. And he's telling me shit and he introduces me to Cut Creator. And he's like, he's the DJ. And he's like, I'm like, so what you do? Cause he seemed like the most chill person there. <clears throat> like he was like, like the, you know, like the Beastie Boys were like sprawled out in the airport. It was like a, it was some rap shit. But he seemed like cool and aware of shit. And he was like, well, you know, I keep the shit going. And that, we go fast forward, I go home, I tell my mom for Christmas I want turntables. And she gets me turntables and that's how I started. Man, that's the craziest shit I have ever heard, bruh. A lot of people then came through here and told a lot of stories, but ain't nobody told no fucking LL Cool J story. <laughs> so you just a kid, minding your business with a pocket full of quarters. Cool. <laughs> Relocating airport buggies. LL Cool J like, yo, little man, what type of fucking Coca-Cola commercial shit is this? He done told an 11 year old kid Yo, son, I'm a rapper, I travel the Yo, come meet my people. Those are the Beastie Boys. Excuse me, they drunk. Young man, make better decisions in your life. Don't be drunk at the airport. My man Cut Creator right here. Like, he's the father figure of the group. You see how he's a rap? <laughs> what the fuck, man? <laughs> and then as he was leaving, he took off his Kango and was like, hey, little man. <laughs> Now keep no. in mind, oh, man, no, no, this no. was the 80s, so he went home. He was like, yo, moms, yo. I was in the airport today, cold chilling. <laughs> LL Cool J pulls up on me. Where's my mother? I'm sorry, you're my mother. Listen, <laughs> so he wants me to, yo, he, he totally wants me to go sign with Def Jam. I was like, LL, no disrespect to my man, but I'm 11. He's like, yo, shorty, we got tutors on the bus. You ever heard of these kids? <laughs> Yo, look at this dope chain he gave me, man. I'm really part of the crew. You feel it? So I ran away at 11, went on tour with Def Jam. I didn't and Jermaine did. Exactly. Yeah. See? Yeah. It could have been you and Jermaine. Yeah, straight up. Damn it. Man, yeah. that is some of the dopest shit I have ever heard. No, the, the, the best part of it for me is like, so I had this little Radio Shack Walkman, and the nigga asked me, to, could he buy it? And I had bought it. I had paid like ten dollars for it. Look, look, up, look, man. listen. I paid about ten, twelve dollars for it. My mama did. I sold it to him for forty. 
Bro, what type? LL Cool J. You remember this shit? <laughs> Come up here and tell us what happened. It was really LL Cool, LL cool J. J. And that nigga bought your Walkman at the Atlanta airport. 40. For the 40. At 11. I that had $40 was like, in about like $40 plus, plus, plus about, about $7 worth of quarters I had. Like, nigga, I was so good. I bet you came home like, Mom, you can quit your job. <laughs> we made it. This airport shit is I got this. Watch. Watch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can't be a black kid and come home with forty dollars. Your grandma yeah, you gonna do? break down crying. Oh, oh, oh my god! Got my grandson in the street. <laughs> yeah. He came home with a pocket full of money. Quarters, no less. <laughs> oh man. Man, that's the wildest shit though. Shout out to LL Cool J. Yeah, man. man. Without that man. interaction, none of this shit would have happened. Yeah. All it takes is that. It just be that little game. piece of fucking. Yeah, the the one to go play some fucking video. This games. how good of a DJ Cut creator was, bro. You didn't even see him DJ. Not one fucking time. <laughs> you didn't even see him around no fucking. But let me tell you music. what happened though. But let me tell you what I did. Like about three months after that, that fucking what's my DJ's name? Cut creator. I heard that goddamn song. Like I know this nigga. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, like. Bro, until you told this, like. I bet every time you have told that story, it was unbelievable until this point in time. <laughs> now people on the internet are gonna be like, yo, I worked at the Atlanta airport back then. He is not lying. Somebody know. <laughs> I'm saying I was up that bitch every weekend, bro, like just taking them fucking buggies back. Damn. You probably made first hundred thousand in quarters. <laughs> I had definitely That's had. one of the busiest airports in the world. I'm sure it was carts everywhere. Bruh, listen, I feel like they stopped letting you get the quarters because of us. Like, they don't do that shit no more. Like, you can't go get no refund now. Like, Man. Like, we caked, we caked up. That's crazy, though. Damn. You ever run into LL Cool J again? I did. Yeah. Did you tell him that story? I did. Did he remember it? No. He was like, I remember. He, he did. You know what I'm saying? He did it. Atlanta? <laughs> uh, okay, okay. Cause he probably was doing Bruh, shit like, like that. everywhere. He probably like buying little niggas Walkmans, like just like, like a Walkman, like Radio Shack out ass. The streets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Young niggas don't know I'm doing them a favor. They don't need that shit in me. And you know what's crazy? Today, LL Planet C. Today I bought this little hat from the, the dude, the, the Water Boy dude. They got these hats, Water Boys in the hood. I got it in the car now. Like, you got to support, you got to pay it forward. Okay. Wait till that one day they catch you with no money and they stun on you. You Man. think them water boys out there struggling? No, 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 no. I didn't say no it, bro. I broke it, yeah. but don't worry about it, nigga. <laughs> boy, no water, boy. Choke a heart here, you talking about? <laughs> yeah. Hey, man. I, I respect the hustle. It's fine. They'll keep it real with you, though. Because they caught me. I had, ain't had no cash. They were like, nah, we should write no money. Go ahead, bro. We just fuck with you on the show. They real, bro. Some of them. Like, um, they grown. I some think of them niggas, that's what I'm saying. Too. Some of them niggas is grown men because the nigga had me shaving under his yeah. neck. <laughs> hey, man, they definitely they had, had the grown. shave bumps and shit. I was like, where are you? Bro, I keep shut up, bro. Go ahead. The light green, bro. The light green. <laughs> Light green, bro. Go ahead. <laughs> you asking way too much. Go ahead, bro. Yeah, and they gave me grown man eye contact. Like, what? Oh, nah, cool. <laughs> All right. Let me get one of them hats. Man, them niggas take that shit serious, too. They need you to just let them post up, because I had threw the nigga $5 one time. He was, I was like, bro, you keep the water. He like, man, drink this damn water, bro. How the hell like that? <laughs> just drop them on the seat. I was like, I guess, bro. <laughs> like, shit. They care. They, I guess they give a fuck. That's how you, they got a name. They built a brand like, like that shit that made it out of Atlanta. Like, like the te the myth of like, like it's mythology in LA. Like just like Dallas Austin, like everything in the world that then happened, he was right there. Yeah. You yeah. work with Dallas Austin. Yeah. How yeah, you run? How you run into Dallas Austin? <clears throat> um, work well. Dallas used to live in College Park, so it's like skating rink like everywhere the niggas was at dallas was there right like but he was just see there as the rich and that's dude. what i was saying like he be everywhere that niggas be at yeah yeah dallas, i mean because he, he's from here too like 
I think that might be the Atlanta superpower, like the ability to be comfortable wherever you at. Like you get there, you're like, all right, I ain't finna disrespect nobody. I'm not gonna allow nobody to disrespect me. It's gonna be fine. And you just enjoy it. Like we don't really go out of town and cause problems. You don't hear about Atlanta niggas going somewhere and causing an uproar. It just don't happen. Man, that might be the coldest shit you said, though, man. I hope hey, all the niggas in all the other cities just peep the message. Man, learn how to fucking act. <laughs> <laughs> so much great shit can happen when niggas start acting right. That's it. Act right. A little act right, man. That's, I guess that's just the down south shit, too, man. We a little... I think so. I mean, we crazy in our own right, but at least we, you know, it's a certain level of respect that's given before it's just disrespect. Yeah. And it's actually used as it's whatever energy you bring is going to get met. Yeah. More than, um, yeah, it ain't even disrespect at that point. It's usually like shit, self-defense. Right. You know what I'm saying? But like, and the element of surprise, too. Cause that'll do it every time. You know, sometimes you might be arguing with one motherfucker and then a hundred motherfuckers turn yeah. around and yeah. you be like, all y'all with him? Yeah. <laughs> Nah, I was just saying, hey, really, no, like, I ain't like, tripping. Be hot at a nigga, you feel like? Hey man, listen, I seen it like it's a, um, it was this club, this club five five nine, <clears throat> legendary comedy spot too. Absolutely. Okay, so this okay amateur night five five nine comedy shit. Some dude, it's it's a part well, project from next door called Harris Home. Come on. Okay, so niggas from Harris Home would come <laughs> to five five nine to do amateur night. They're like not really, comedy? Yeah, like they just come like at the bar. So just regular hood niggas and they would come who sign funny up. And who fu like you know how like, boy, you should do that shit. Them niggas. Like, all like the, a gang of them. Yeah, and they would just come do it. And, and so like they up there and they, they not necessarily funny except for the, to the niggas who came with them because they know the joke. Right. Like, you know, a big head ass nigga. So, you know what I'm saying? And they talking about somebody specific. Right, so it's killing these niggas, but the, okay. Three. Them three, the niggas rolling. But so it's, this particular night is two dudes from New York. And it's 90s, it's like early 90s. Now, 94-ish, 95. This episode is sponsored by Blue Chew. Hey, what's up? It's your man Carlos Miller. I would just like to thank the good folks over there at Blue Chew for sponsoring this podcast. They sponsored this podcast and they gave us a special promo code for all of our listeners who could, you know, benefit from a little extra confidence where it counts. It's bluechew.com. Use the promo code 85 South. Blue Chew brings you the first chewable with the same FDA approved active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis. So yeah, you need to get over there to the bluechew.com. Blue Chew is prescribed online by licensed physicians, so you don't have to go to the doctor's office or wait in line at the pharmacy, and it ships right to your door in a discreet package. You know, go use that promo code. Use the promo code. 85 South Blue Chew. You better go over there, man. I'm telling you. It's changing the world. It's prolific like that. It might, Versace might have been just kicking off. Okay. So, like, short sets and, and, and Cartier. So, they, it's some, some New York dudes there and there. They're frustrated by not understanding the jokes. So, one of them stands up and is like, yo, man, cut me out. Get the fuck off the stage. And, like, goes, you know, he went ham. And dude on the stage said, hey, buddy, hold on, hold on. Hey, where you from, Shawty? He said, the boogie down. He said, oh, OK. So geographically, you're you not really thinking this through. And he was like, huh? And he said, see, because the way I see it is, if, if some shit go down in the next five minutes, you got to call New York. I got to call the bar. <laughs> And at this moment, he was like, what? And he was about to wolf back. His partner jumped up and knocked him clean out. Saved the both of them. His own homeboy His knocked him? His homeboy knocked him the fuck out. Clean, cold. Bro, that story was going like this, then that bitch went. That's, that's how, that, so, so the reason why he stood up is because when he said, my folks at the bar, literally the whole club stood up like, yeah. It was a save. It was, he saved. went in defense mode. He yeah, was, he like, bro. I, oh, y'all think I'm with him? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Keep the show going. Who next from Harry's home? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cause stand this nigga B. He's always fucking saying the wrong shit, man. No disrespects. No disrespects, son. Hey, I don't right. know. I don't know, son. By no, son. I was supposed to I, buy something from him. 
But you yeah. understand? So I don't know, son. So when he wake up, I'm going to knock him back out if the show ain't over. No All disrespect. Right. Now finish. He from he said the book. I'm from Harlem, son. I'm not <laughs> yeah. No. It never it took a turn for him, man. Damn. Yeah. That's some crazy shit. Comedy club always got some bullshit going on. If it's gonna be a hard, like if they got a good headliner, somebody get knocked the fuck out. Yeah, I didn't know that. Last show I had in Florida. I knew she was about to get crazy. They was laughing so hard. Lady leaned back, her whole goddamn wig <laughs> fell off. I'm thinking she finna, you know, try to scramble and put it on. She just took the motherfucker off and laid it on her chest. Did <laughs> I put it back on in a minute? This shit. She laughing hard in the motherfucker, man. Some lady, she drunk, she mad. She get up, talking shit. She done came and sat all on the stage. I'm thinking security about to come. So she get up and get back walking around. This black lady just came up and was like, bop, knocked the ass out. They, they was about to throw her out. I was like, no, nah, don't throw her out. They threw the lady who got knocked out out. So as she get up, she's still in the club fucking with people. How about this shit, crazy? The white lady get up, slap the shit out of her. Everybody in the club cheering like a motherfucker. Wow. I was like, I gotta get the fuck out of here, man. Cause if this shit make the news. Yeah, <laughs> you did it. It wasn't me. It was the crowd. That's yeah. how Florida get down. Man. Nah, whatever, whatever brand of comedy you brought. Oh yeah, that's when that shit started happening. It's, it's ass kicking me good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to switch it up, do some dolphin jokes or something. <laughs> this other shit too bad about it. Y'all on the road. Y'all y'all out now, right? Come on, man. Nah, I see you see it. Yeah. We out here. Ghetto Legends tour. Yes, sir. We right here. Yeah, man. How, how it's been out there? Man, we taking it one step at a time. Like we uh, been like overdosing on wine, you feel me? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just one, man, it's been all love. Uh, them people missed the hell out of us, man. Yeah. We went to Biloxi and sold damn near 8,000 tickets, man. Just out there showing mad love to the people who need it. One time for Biloxi. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Making came out and showed us love. Making what's up? Hell yeah, we got we got some cool shit coming over here, man. We just working. Okay. Yeah. We got motherfuckers like you coming through here and just dropping game on us. Let us know the LL Cool J is out here buying Walkmans and for little, for little kids. Bro, like, what else strange done happen in this motherfucker? Man, I don't, man, I don't. that can't be the wildest shit that done happen in the music industry. No, it's probably not. But that's that's a cold one though. Yeah, that one applies to me, so I can, you know, I don't mind having to tell that story. Damn, that's a hell of a come up, man. No, listen, that man. might have just been destiny for you to fuck with that music then. No, absolutely. I feel like, look, I'm not fighting it. Like, and I, I think that's the other one. It's like, I ain't fighting no feeling. Like, if I if I felt that it, it's honest, and that's what I'm roll with. Mm. So, I feel like my discernment is in good, good standing, because I don't really, I, like, my intent is good. If you do good, good will come to you. Yeah, you from the South. That's Real grandma, shit. Grandma talk. What do you mean? Like, I'm really from the South. I'm talking about like, like with that water pump in the front yard. Yeah. That's, that's the type of South. With that good cold air water in there. Yeah. Yeah, that type of shit. Okay. I'm talking about, I'm so from the South. Like our dog ain't never came in the house. <laughs> you feel me? Yeah, that's the outside. That dog, you don't bring that dog. I'm talking about so from the south when you can spend the whole weekend at your grandma's house and don't have no clothes. Mm -hmm. Yep, it's fine. Turn the things inside out. Exactly. I'm real south, bro. I'm talking about when your grandma and your mama, they open up all the doors when they fry chicken. You can smell that shit in the whole neighborhood. Yeah, but it don't, it don't fuck the house up. Right. You know about that. Yeah. I'm talking about lay your school clothes out. Yeah, and, and not because you're choosing, it's because it's mm -mm. what you're wearing. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's yeah, real South shit. It's real South shit. Yeah, like, boy, go to bed. For real, for real. Take your ass to bed. South. I'm talking about real South where you be like, I'm hot, and they just be like, be still. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down somewhere. Be quiet. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. It's the real South shit. I'm talking about where the ice cream man just pull up and turn the van off. Mm-hmm. That's it. One stop. Yeah, first of all, it's gonna, because the person with money gonna take about 10 minutes to come out of the house. One stop. Mm-hmm. 
And he ain't playing no ice cream man music. Mm -hmm. Straight Master Gucci. P. Well, I'm sorry about He playing Gucci Lemonade. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. the official that's the new, hood ice that, cream that man. Exactly I've heard that. Lemon pepper uh, wings in the free cup. Yeah, it's real shit. Damn, Damn I've man. actually heard that. Yeah, yeah. Like, I've heard that, uh, like, recent. Yeah, OK. Damn, did they change it? I wonder where the I fuck you buy an ice that? cream truck from. I cream <laughs> truck stole. Nigga. Got, I don't know. Like, like, hey, what, what? You ain't never rode past nowhere and they had a bunch of ice cream trucks out there for sale. <laughs> I mean, where you get a mail truck at? They don't sell mail trucks, do they? I mean, they not about to let you have a mail truck unless you work for them. You got to work at the post office to buy so like an old like mail a truck for like ice cream niggas. I don't know. I think them niggas be making their own decals. But who put the refrigerator there? Some of them don't have it. It just be a chain defreezer in there, bitch, with a <laughs> power converter. Nigga's an electrician, too, then. Hey, man. You do what you gotta do. You Thrifty. do what you gotta do. That's what it is. That's a hustle, though, because we ain't never even find out who ice cream men work for. Where the ice cream came from. Exactly. These motherfuckers might be working for the federal government. Poison. And y'all talking about Corona. And then they always talk about all the shit that they put in the projects in the ghetto. Won't nobody investigate where the fuck all that ice cream came from? <laughs> you thinking about it? Yeah, because I'm like, I don't know these niggas. Like, they were all, show all up weird. In urban areas and places Bing that you dang. couldn't get pizza delivered. And they would show up right at the most violent time. If like you in think the middle of football games type shit. Like, like 6 o'clock when it's almost dark. These nigga pull up. Ting, ling, ling, ling. You can hear that music. <laughs> and be like, everybody know what the fuck that music is. Nigga, the dope boy like, shit, ice cream truck. Hey, 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 little man. Hey, little, hey, hey shout bring, out. Hey, bring me a baseball glove with the bug on. <laughs> what you want, a moon pop? A moon bomb? What you want? Yep. Yeah. And then you remember all those uh, like propaganda don't do drugs movies from the 80s? They had kids like getting shot because they didn't bring the dope boy his change back. Yo, little man, where, where's my five dollars? <laughs> pow, pow, pow. See, kids. Why was he shot? Because he was smoking crack. That's like, what? No, he tried to take that nigga Monday. Bro, if we go back and watch that shit now, they probably destroyed all them. Them little Friday afternoon special shits they used to show us in, at school. Man, listen, like, I'm, I'm watching, um, like, they do these, like, commercials from the 80s, and you see how, like, weird shit look now. Like, the people that you bought shit from, like, kids buying sh from little pineapple cut white boys, like, they, their hair was, like, in their bangs, like Justin Bieber. I'm gonna fuck you up. Remember that show, Mr. Wizard? Yep. Creepy old white man. Just pick up some random kids, take them to his house, and do science experiments. This makes this LL Cool J story way weirder the way that you talk, like, when you think about it. Think about it. it, man. LL Cool J in the airport. All these people trying to, yo, LL, can we get a picture? No, by the way, no. It wasn't even, he wasn't famous yet. This was I Need a Beat. It wasn't videos. Oh. Like, it wasn't, like, this is, I don't even, what was it, like, 80? This was yeah. real underground hip hop shit. Yeah, it's like, I Need a Beat. Like, this is, there's, this is Death Jam. 89? Yeah, Ooh. early, like. 86? Yeah, that's it, 10, 11, yes. Yeah. Yeah, man. So it's like, he was really <coughs> just, he was on the come up. He's just a good hearted dude, I guess. You know yeah. Like, he's still a nigga out here hustling. Like, let me buy that walk, man, for over. I mean, oh, how much? 40? All right, here you go, shorty. Because he had to know this shit was Radio Shack. It was like realistic. It probably said Radio Shack. It said realistic, <laughs> like that's a Radio Shack brand, whatever. I'm he just here. probably just really needed one. He, he might have fucking been listening. What if he was listening to the, the demo of like the rest of the radio album? He was probably listening to the instrumentals and writing the rhyme. That's what I'm talking about. On your shit. Now that's new face type shit. That is like, that guy, <laughs> damn that's new face. new face type shit, man. Like. Yeah, so 84 is, yeah. Damn. And you really been out here in these streets. Yeah, I was 11. Yep, I was 11. So you such, you, you're so deep in the hip hop. How you get to, in the studio with Pink and shit like that? Um, so I started doing like You got a broad range of shit. I like music, man. I yeah. grew up like, I, I, it wasn't an algorithm. I put, just, put us up on some shit that niggas might not know about, like some outside of the normal shit. What's it, throw us some shit we can go fuck with. You mean like just 
basically some white people shit. That's, that's, that's some shit you know about that you wish more niggas knew about. You know what? It ain't even. I don't know. If it's not white shit, but nothing like that. But Suggy Otis, like it's Suggy Otis. Suggy Otis. You yeah. fuck with it? I know you. See, I mean, okay. Oh yeah, he 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 different. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, I mean, like the thing is, it's like a bunch of, it's like so much music, bro. Like at this point, I don't even like my brain just like shut down when you ask that question. Damn. Like you stingy. There you go, new face. We done talked him up. That's crazy. <laughs> new face it. is actually here. Suggy Otis. I'm gonna look it up. Yeah, I'm, let me think. Who? See, I'm and I'm just in a different place. I'm I'm also I'm really heavy money bag yo right now. You fucking with money bag? Y'all ain't did nothing yet. I mean, yeah, I mean, well, he worked with us at, um, well, he worked with Pharrell in the Neptunes. Tell, so tell me about this shit, man. Tell me about what you and Pharrell over there doing. Um, honestly, man, we're just trying to keep contributing, bro. Like, that's that's honestly all it is. It's like the goal is to be able to contribute and, and learn from, like, everybody. Like, the newer the newer artists, the, the catalog artists, the classic, you know, the people we came up with. Right. But, like, making sure that, you know, there's a bridge of information and, and just, just the fundamentals get get passed on. If for real came on this bitch, I know this shit'll blow up in Japan. <laughs> you know how many people that is? A lot. It's billions. Shh. Just don't know. He, yeah, he's popular, man. He's popular everywhere. Like Happy yeah. was like a big song. I was just about to ask you, is he gonna do another one? You can't do another Happy. How do you do? He should one? do every emotion. <laughs> Say. <laughs> I'm Got down. Got me fucked up. <laughs> Grab the gat, cause these niggas don't know that shit is real. <laughs> Got me fucked up. Nigga, that'd be hard. Yeah. Put money bag yo on it. Nigga, what? <laughs> huh? Pooh shiesty? Brr. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, listen, man, anything is possible, bro. <laughs> you be playing that shit? You be putting them up on shit, like the new shit? Yeah, but like on some real shit, like for like I think we all put each other up on shit. Like he'll hit me with some like he might have hit me with money bag, yo, one one morning. Like, yo, you listen to this? I was already up on it, but the fact that he woke up at six in the morning, like, you heard this shit? Like, and then that's what happened. He actually went on his podcast, said how much he liked young money bag, yo, money bags, people reached out to me, and then we were like, Well yeah, let's get them together. And yeah, then we got two records on the on this new album. What the fuck took you so long to say that? <laughs> you just saw me pull up in the Monte Carlo. You I know did. I be listening to Money Bag You on that bitch. I just looked at my wrist and got time today. I use that voice when I rap his yeah. shit. Yeah, because it's, it's a good voice. It's a great voice to rap. I don't that. like niggas, I don't like bitches, I don't, I don't like nobody. nobody. I don't backtrack, <laughs> I don't miss nobody. Man, fuck everybody. <laughs> yeah. That nigga cold, man. Yeah, man. He, he There's so many cold niggas out here, but every rapper that's rapping about some violent shit is getting life. I mean, listen, bro, like, especially when they rapping about it and it feel real. Shit, it is. That's the point. It like, be on video. Them niggas that go in the club, get to fight and shoot that bitch up, drop the coldest song the next day, put the surveillance camera video. In, in they video. They put the news clip. 16 people were shot <laughs> at a local Atlanta nightclub last night. Y'all nigga know what it is. Nigga got shot, shot last night. Nigga got something to do with it. Nigga got shot and that I had something to do, do with it. it. They said 16. Nigga got shot and I, I had something to soon. do with it. And I had something to do with it. Ordered a drink about 12. Bitch, it didn't come. <laughs> Went to the car, changed my shirt, and got, got my, my gun. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Them niggas be too detailed, bro. Yeah, nigga had on they the red shirt. They get on shirt. the song, make the diss record. T not only talk about the shooting, but talk about the injuries and where the bullets hit that nigga, bro. Yeah. Your homeboy talking shit, but that 12 gang hit him in his chest, came down his breast cavity and hit him in the breast, came out the nipple, hit his back, now he paralyzed, hit him in his eye. He could see, I had on a disguise. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> it was Ronald Reagan, cause I know nigga don't know who that is. What? <laughs> They tell you the kind of bullets that you two, two, three, hit the car, engine cut off. What the fuck? 
tell your little partner my bad ain't mean to step on his jade. What? <laughs> Like, these <laughs> niggas are too, they, they good at what they do. Yeah, man. Like but they, I'm just saying, bro, the, if they just changed the subject matter and made it positive, it might even hit harder, bro. And I'm telling you, what if I, niggas I, just I, start rapping about shit that you never expect them to rap about? They start rapping about fucking solar systems and hidden planets and shit. Niggas start rapping about you that hidden what? color shit. There's actually more people who know about that than there are who actually know how to sell crack. Like, exactly. Everybody don't really know how to sell, though. Nigga, crack, it, crack really been out of style. Yeah, that's what I'm, I'm saying. Like, it, it ain't really like the, the biggest population of people don't do criminal do shit. Do you understand? Like, crack ain't even like a top, selling crack ain't even a top profession no more. You can make more money as a YouTuber than you can selling crack. <laughs> You yeah. can make more money doing live streams for two hours than you could selling crack for a whole weekend. Yeah. Yeah, it's not fly. Like, if you're doing it, you just ain't, you just didn't develop like no new skills. Do you understand you could trade Forex right now and make more money selling crack? Do you understand that people who sell crack make less than people who work for Amazon? <laughs> Minus, that's not even including the benefits. No, there are no benefits. That's what I'm telling you. Think about when a drug dealer die. You don't. I'm just saying when they, well, you ever seen like when a street nigga died, them niggas be, they net worth be 16,000. Like you did all no, this in the streets the six, for like, $16,000 like, in cash. They still doing GoFundMe? Fuck. <laughs> nigga, you owe 12,000 on an Escalade. So basically, all right, you did. You took all these chances for four thousand dollars, my nigga, and some outfits. Hey man, but throw back <laughs> Thursday though, for the rest of your life. That's what you did it for. Remember that? I mean, I remember when I was that boy. Nah, man, I don't shit. Cause I remember real drug dealers. Not saying that the what, drug okay, dealers. Sorry, yeah, what does that mean? Nah, I'm just saying like drug dealers from the 90s and shit. When I was growing up, that shit looked like the life. It was like pre-internet, right? Man, before the internet yeah. came, man, the drug dealers just looked like they was having fun all the time. They had nice cars, they had fine women, they had the nicest animals, they had the best dogs. They were just, when yeah, the they drug were doing dealers it, they was outside, had some, they everybody snakes. was outside. All the crackheads was outside washing cars and shit. It was just, <laughs> A better environment when the drug dealers, when they was just put outside being drug dealers with the music playing and you, your uncle be like, hey, get your ass from over there. <laughs> what? The drug, they're not even selling drugs right now. I like this song. We're just in the neighborhood. I grew up with, get your ass in the house. You know they sell drugs. <laughs> they going to the jail. They going to the penitent. All of them. Everybody, look at them. It was always that one old nigga who didn't approve. Y'all just gonna sit here and eat this barbecue that he bought with this drug money. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want a rib? Hell yeah, I want a rib. I'm just saying. I thought y'all wasn't gonna give me. <laughs> yeah. It's nah. back when the drug dealers gave a fuck about the community. Yeah, they had to. I'm just saying. Like they didn't have a side hustle getting like doing Instagram live. They need to, but they can't be on Instagram live talking about the shit they did while they were selling drugs. They do though. But you can't they do it now. I'm, I'm like, trying they do, to like, tell they, their guns, their drugs, their like methods, like all this stuff is on the live. Stop doing that. Stop doing that. That's that's gonna act right. I tell motherfuckers all the time. I'm never. You don't don't record me doing shit illegal. Well, just see. My thing is, I just don't do it illegal. Me either. Yeah, I just don't. Yeah. But I'm just saying. Yeah, it's not worth it. I need to be in a safe environment. By the way, the trap is a very, like, I feel so safe here, bro. It's, it's, it is safe. It feel like it. Yeah, it's because not that we're doing, we're just trapping media out of here. That's all it is. It's the 85 South Show. Yeah, this is. is the number one rated black show amongst people who, brother, who used to sell drugs, man. Like, when they do the polls, they get real specific. <laughs> Analytics. You ask any black woman named Kiki what her favorite show is? This one. Yeah, that ass. But I, I mean, this is a dope show, man. Like, y'all actually, like, y'all put, like, because I'm, again, like, I'm, I don't know, I, I'm not famous, so. Yes, you like, are. No, no, no. Look at this. 
Look at all the shit he did, y'all. No, it's me. I work Nigga a lot. Nigga was in the studio with Pink. You famous, bro. I work a lot. White people like you in this music industry, you good. Because <laughs> somebody was like, you know who we need? KP. Somebody get KP on the goddamn phone. OK. See? Actually, by the way, that was LA. A black person did that. But he told a white dude, because you know he had a white dude, probably named Zach. Dude. Zach, do me a favor. <laughs> call KP. Do me a favor. Let's get KP on this. Okay, I like that story. Yeah, I made it up. I like it, Zach. The fuck was that? Hell yeah. No, man, I just Shout out to L.A. Reid, though, man. He put a lot of black people in position. Like, yeah, yeah bro. Like, him and, his, him, him and his crew came to Atlanta and brought, like, some infrastructure. Yeah. Like, to a bunch of talented people and, and gave, like, real outlets. Which one you met first, L.A. Reid or Babyface? I met Pebbles first. Pebbles. And she introduced me to L.A., and then I, I met Babyface last. So when you was meeting them, did you understand you was meeting some of the titans of the music industry right then? No. Oh. I, I, I knew that these people had some cars I had never seen. They had these funny trucks. Them, like, they had Range Rovers back when I didn't know what a Range Rover was. So I was like, man, they got some spaceship trucks. So <laughs> I was just listening because I was like, they had shit. Right. And I was like, I've, I've seen that in a movie. That's a good reason. Drop that. Look, listen to people who have shit that you don't have. They know some shit that you don't know. Pierce, look at that. Especially if you want the shit. But yeah. clearly you need, to. that's why that dude started making them internet videos where he go up to people like, hey man, what you do? Oh, yeah. mm. And the people, they know about the shit now. Yeah. Now I don't want nobody to tell them for real. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, oh, oh, going I up to the house. all aquariums. <laughs> <laughs> White people be lying about their job. They're like, you gonna show up and take that motherfucker. <laughs> they be making up shit. Uh, I, I, I hang up home decor. <laughs> Don't tell black people you can make money doing this shit. Yeah. Secret job having that, man. Secret That's money. a cold ass ring, man. He played for the Lakers or some no, shit. No, man, my, my granddad. Your granddad put you up on that? Yeah, he gave me this. He left me this. That's a family heirloom. Mm -hmm. You wore it to the trap. You see how much? That's special. Absolutely. Your granddad, that's his ring? It was. He a real one. He was. What was he doing to have a ring like that? Just kind of ring shit. Just just at the card game <laughs> talking shit. I don't need your little money, nigga. <laughs> My grandson, nigga, work with Mariah Carey, motherfucker. Yeah, the goddamn cars again. <laughs> nigga ring this motherfucking big. You think I give a shit about this <laughs> brand new truck outside? <laughs> motherfucker, give me a cigarette. That shit was right there dead on. <laughs> Granddaddy talking big shit. Yeah, man. That's a hard ass ring though, man. Yeah, he was a good dude. Did you miss your granddaddy? Yeah, man. I was telling him about my granddad on here the other day, man. Yeah, no, that was that was like my that was my real dad. For real. I was telling him how my granddaddy's drawers ain't never fit. Whole life. That's funny. Drawers was too big. I don't know what he could have did if he would have had the right size drawers. Right, not <laughs> Nigga, you just know he chafed up. Like I'm just saying, I just know he wasn't comfortable, man. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> box of breeze. What if they had box of breeze? Nah, cool you know, he just wore straight old man drawers. Yeah. Man. Tidy whiteys, them old ones. Mm. The old fruit alone with just the blue stripe. Yeah. The blue stripe and the gold stripe. <laughs> old ass draw. Made out of t-shirt material. Yep, yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, man, my, yeah, hey, man, my, like, but my, yeah, my granddad, like, he, he was that, his, his, his drawers fit. <laughs> That's how he had that ring, Yeah, man. his drawers fit, like, I can't. My granddad's dad left me a pocket knife. He <laughs> <laughs> get nail ring. Taking all my shit with me. <laughs> he wore the, mm. He had the bitch on him. <laughs> <laughs> Tried to get it off. They had reinforced the motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, man. So, so, okay, okay. What? I'm just like this. I'm, I'm just. I'm. I don't want to be. I don't want to be the. Like, who is this nigga on here on the couch? This nigga. This is who he is. Uh, <laughs> He's responsible for all this shit. It's some more shit. Nah, man, you, you ain't gonna be that nigga. Okay. It's just dope to know that there's dope ass people around here, man. And you, all the shit that you did, all your accomplishments made this shit right here possible, man. Yeah, all man. that work y'all put in and made the city hot. And it's like, the light that y'all brought to the city is still here. 
You get what I'm saying? This shit's still going on. Oh, it's somebody and it's, in the, it's wild it's, because I'm like, you I know where all these studios at around here? No, we I'm, know, I'm from in this like, three mile radius, it's 30 studios. You don't know what the fuck going on tonight. Yeah, I grew up on Deal, up the street. Like this, like this is like, like just seeing all, seeing all this shit grow is like amazing. Exactly. Ain't I on a pill? Right down Deal, right there. Come on, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, it, 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 up, it's bro. a testament to how many talented people in Atlanta, man. And, Everybody and, talented. Yeah. You might fuck around and be getting some Waffle House, nigga come right back. Hey, bro, no disrespect. Y'all get through eating, I can rap for you. Yeah. And be fine. <laughs> be fine the motherfucker. And be from somewhere you ain't never heard of. Yeah. Shit, yeah. I'm from goddamn Book Tusa, Georgia. We yeah. just came up, DB. Cause you know, shit. Trapping we... and shit, me and my baby. Mom, take my number in your phone. You got Instagram? <laughs> I don't really fuck with it like that because my phone fucked up. But, you know what I'm saying? But I'm on there though. I'm on there. I, got, I, I hit you. Shit be locked. Nine What's crazy, followers. man? I, hit, I, I ran into a nigga in the gas station like that a couple months ago and hit him and the nigga played me so, so left. I was like, damn, man. Okay. Like, damn. He ain't even know. I, I don't know if he knew or not. I just know that he really was not interested. Damn. Like, I think, and, but, but it made me laugh <clears> in, a, in a way that made me kind of proud too. It's like, I like that people now know that they have the power to do their own shit. Part like, of being great. Yeah, it's like, man, dude, like, bro, I got to show that. And, 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 he, and, and what he said made me, um, it was like, it was almost made me feel hopeful, like on some end of a movie shit. And he was like, you know what, Sean, I'm going to just take my time and do my, do my thing and get, you know, the folks to go mess with me right. as they mess with me. I, I was like, all right, bro. Like, I appreciate that. It takes that. forever to do that shit, but whatever. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, I whatever. appreciate that. Good bet. Nah. <laughs> nah, know. see, that ain't how you make it. Hey man, hey, but but you know, hey man, that's what I'm saying. It's enough information out here now for people to be right and wrong. That's what I be trying to tell them. Is like, it's enough information out here for people to be right and wrong, and you are wrong. You have to know that you're wrong. You're fucking up. <laughs> Don't nobody want to hear about that part. You you fucking up. This you gonna make some good decisions and you gonna make some bad ones. That's yeah, part of the game. But hey. that one right there, you that was a bad one. You fucked up. All this goddamn Google out here, and you still don't know nothing. Hey, man, these smartphones don't make smart people. I'm just saying, at least get a second opinion. <laughs> hey, buddy, what you think? Buddy, buddy hit me. <laughs> what the name is? Man, hold up. Oh, shit, bro, that the nigga from, uh... <laughs> with, uh... Nigga! Uh, Shout it. You know? Man, call Shawty back right now. <laughs> Hell yeah, niggas don't be knowing. I like. I think. I, I think that's. Nobody should know unless they care. I feel like you should care enough. To, if you don't care enough to know, then shit ain't for you. Like I'm like, man, learn some shit about what you're trying to do. I know. That's why I be watching Walter Cronkite and shit. One day they gonna Media, give me yeah. a late night talk show because I know how to talk to niggas. And you know, I gonna have to come through me, cause I'm the only one over here prepared. Be like, welcome back to daily nightly black news. <laughs> I'll probably be have a gr oh, with my beard. Oh, thing out. Great that thing out. So I can look more believable. Yeah, get you some glasses. Today we have KP music. You make producers, don't you? <laughs> yeah, that type of shit. Like, you'll be like the nigga whisperer. Right. Yeah, like whenever they need a Negro, I'm like. They gonna have, well, I, at some point, I know that they gonna need an older black man. And I'm from Mississippi too, so. Yeah, they the might just way. be like, Reverend Carlos Miller. Reverend Good Doctor. Yeah, but you can't see, like, they like older black men who don't want to be popular. So you can't really look up at the camera. You gotta act mm. like you're shuffling something. Mm. Today, so you say. in black people news, <laughs> <laughs> looks like we're going to be black forever. <laughs> don't change, don't try, but don't tell no lies. It's just some shit. I know it's, my purpose is deeper. I got you. Yeah, right. so you got to research. Right. That's another one. You got to research. Who, you, who did you research? Um, Clarence Avon, Gerald Busby. Um, the Russell, <coughs> Russell Simmons, Andre Harrell, you know, and when I got to know L.A. Reid and Babyface, like, then I started digging into like their history, like with people like Dick Griffey and people they they came. That's a cold from. name, bro. Dick Griffey. He's a gangster. <laughs> he sound like it. 
Yeah, but but it's like you so you start figuring out these stories and start figuring out the, the similarities of like the the work, you know, and, and, and the people and the character and the and the the character you have have to carry right. if you wanna um maintain. So it's like the, I looked at the people whose music I like, like and looked at the people who were behind that. Like I would like I just read. Like I read credits, then I I read biographies on those people if it come up. So it's just like get as much information and that way you kind of find out that as different as special as you are, you're not that different and you're not that special. You know what I mean? So it's like, but all these special people did this much work. Hell yeah. Like I read Miles Davis biography and when you think about That motherfucker was a... Yeah, but he practiced. Like everything, he, but he was just—he was just—he had so much fucking yeah, talent. He could literally do everything. Yeah, everything. He—he was—he was one—he was, one, was a superstar. Like, and that's what I'm saying. He was a superstar <clears> at <throat> that. Like everybody, if if you figure out your thing, you can be a superstar. At it. Welcome back to the '85 South Show. <laughs> um, and this is my thing. You feel? Yeah, yeah, there it is. Yeah, I'm hanging in there like they're rocking me. <laughs> <laughs> and been not hit me. KP, bro, don't yeah. let this be the last time you fuck with us at the trap, man. Cat, cat got a question. Yeah. Um, what was it? Two two years ago, 2018. Um, I, I'm so I became Pharrell's um, music supervisor, music director. See how you don't be telling us shit. Okay, and, and that's the shit I'm talking about, bro. It's too regular to you. <laughs> no, nah, this this is not regular, by the way, to me. Like this is like one of the moments. Like okay, bet. Okay, so I'm I've never done music music um, um, supervising before. Like in the in the um, Music director, that's what it was. Music director for his band. Now, I'm not a musician, I'm a DJ, but I'm like, I know how I like to hear his music. I'm like, if you drop it like this, like the crowd will do this. And, you know, so he was like, well, why don't you put my show together? <clears throat> so he ended up doing that. And then he asked, in turn, asked me to come DJ for him on the road. <clears throat> okay, so that's like cool. Then, fast forward, we ended up doing this um, festival called Something in the Water. And it was an idea he had where he wanted to just bring, you know, like, like, tourism into Virginia Beach where he's from and um, it was around the time that they usually do black college week like beach week in Virginia and um, they you know just we wanted to figure out a way to program and give them something to do when they were there because every other time they come something would happen like you know kids restless silly shit happened so we were like let us program it cool the shit went over well we did the show and we did a Pharrell and Friends set in the show and I'm the DJ so Pharrell's friends are Jay-Z and, you know, so at one point, so that night, we're, we're doing the show and we're bringing people on and Jay-Z, I'm, I'm looking, I'm, I'm sitting on stage, I'm DJing and I look up and I realize, damn, I'm DJing for Jay-Z and Pharrell. Like, and Jay-Z's like my favorite rapper, but I, but I kept thinking back at that moment, I was thinking back to getting turntables and like how this shit, these turntables got me to, you know, rocking, for 40,000 people, but being the DJ for like icons, cultural icons. And LL Cool, cool J, and put you, come LL on. Put, you know what, that's the name of my book, LL Put Me On. LL Man, I'm Put Me On. The, the, the full circle of that. Yeah. Cause like, if you, if you go back and you look, shit, LL Cool J went on to become of the same status, you know what I mean? A yeah. God MC like he's, that. He's, he's one of the greatest, like, and and most accomplished, like didn't fall off, like didn't go like he he actually is the one of the first successful hip hop artists, mm -hmm. like for real life successes. Got a radio station, you know, rock the bells and like yeah, it's like like hip hop is dope. It really is. Yeah, I'm, I feel like that's my like I'm I'm. So when you realize you you DJing for Jay Z and for real, did you fuck up a little bit? Like oh shit, hold up, let me get back. <laughs> <I'm> most... <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> Hell no. That would have made that. You, Man, that would have been shit. the worst. Oh, wait a minute. The worst. Hold on. Oh, oh you ready? <laughs> hold, hold, no, no, hold on. Wait, no, no, wait, wait. No, which one? Shit. Oh, shit. God damn, Jay. No, nigga, because it was no, you. No, nigga, you know, because I'm looking at you and you're doing this shit. I'm ah, like. <laughs> Beyonce and it. Okay, okay. All right, I'm, all right. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Right. You ready? <laughs> nigga. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> not at all. Fuck that, nigga. Nah, at some not. point. Let me tell you when I'm not fucking up. <laughs> when the light on like that, no. Nah, Never. Up. No, I practiced. Like, I practiced. I'm not going to, no. Nope. Like, on, I'm, I'm too hard on myself for that. There you go. Stay focused. That shit would have been hard to contain. Man, it would have been horrible, bro. Like, like to go all this time with a good name and shit <laughs> and be the nigga who fucked up the Pharrell and Jay-Z show. Hey, hey man. No. Because that could happen at any moment. You could be doing too good. And then one of the, like, in the middle of one of those breaks, <laughs> he'll be like, yo, who's your man? Yeah. <laughs> he's, dope. he's dope. I like him. And then he'll be like, ah! Okay. Okay. Price just went back up. <laughs> Watch this shit. <laughs> man, listen. He goes crazy. These nuts be. Nah, man. I was... But just, yeah, I don't know. See a shit like that, man. Where else you gonna hear that from? Somebody, like, somebody got, like, somebody got this similar story. Like, they, like. No, the fuck they don't, bro. LL Cool J may have bought one Walkman. <laughs> It ain't no niggas, it ain't no bunch of niggas out here with a story about the time they was DJing for Pharrell and Jay-Z. Niggas don't be knowing. Niggas don't know what to do when Pink in the studio and her shoes off. They don't know what she want to hear. Who wears shoes? How, how you know? Pharrell, one of the coldest <laughs> niggas to ever make some music, and he was like, yo, put my show together. Like, nigga, I, can't, I don't know what the, what you feel like doing today, bro? <laughs> I mean, you got on snow boots and a fur coat. What you what you want me to do, for real? Just do happy a bunch of times and let's get the fuck out of here, man. If these niggas like everything you like, they trust you. It ain't no work to this shit. You went to a Pharrell concert and that nigga just did 16 songs you ain't never heard. You be like, nigga, man. that new shit that Pharrell got? Shit. Be like, oh, that was from the old album. What? When that shit come out? It's my shit from '96. What? <laughs> he has music like that. Yeah. He got a song where everybody is good at music. Yeah. I mean, he's good at music. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They ain't super good at that shit. Like that's it. That's when you got a nigga who got this many hits, how, how you gonna super arrange this shit and make a show? He literally got 50 songs that'll turn the fucking arena upside down. But he wasn't really playing them. Like, cause I think that's a, like, you know, you get tired, you know, you, I don't know, you just like, you get numb to your shit. Like, I wouldn't if I, you know, I don't know. But I guess, yeah, so. He don't know. He's like, man, what shit? What songs you think they like? But his songs be too big, bro. They huge. You fucking play happy around him. He be like, yo, turn that shit off. <laughs> <laughs> I get mad every time I hear that fucking song. <laughs> bro, I'm no disrespect. Play some more shit, but don't play that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nah. Nah, you better be able to, nah, you gotta appreciate happy. I'm telling you, he probably get a royalty check just by us mentioning it. I mean, sing it if you. you I'm not going to. Because <laughs> then my shit, my shit fuck around and be too dope, and they won't let it come out like the CeeLo shit. <laughs> New face, did you know it's a CeeLo Green version of Happy? You heard it. New face might have this you in his it? bag. Is it out? Can you find it on the internet? He got it in his computer. That, no, shut the fuck hey man, up, hey, new face. Did, hey, by the way, new face gonna pl set up one of them old tape decks. Yeah. Hold on, you hold wanna hit? Hold yeah. on, line this tape up. You got the dad play, like I got a dad of it. What you bring, new face? Oh, shit, come on, bro. What you got over there? Oh shit. Oh shit. Carlos talked about it briefly. I don't know what's man. You know. See. Things. So this is a group I was in, parental advisor. Man, everybody know about PA. Flesh, I don't know about everybody. Why, why that's so <laughs> Where does this take you back to? Yeah, this. Okay, so first of all, it's the 20 year anniversary of I'm Serious. So that's crazy. Fuck that thing, cause that be holding the wall. Yeah. Shout out to Tip, what's up? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is crazy. This is the first time I've worked with Pharrell, actually. On this. Like, For real? well, no. 
No, it was You Don't Have to Call. This was after that. I'm sorry. Um, but like the first rap shit, like, like this I felt different about because he was signing my label and I'm like, yo, like, yo, you'll work on this thing. This, this new dude I got. And he heard it and was like, yo, he's crazy. And yeah, so tip, yeah. And he's just been this nigga this whole time. That's the, this is the shit I love. Right. That song went crazy. You got a for real oh, beat wow. with Mix. Tip and Beanie Man? Yep, yeah, mixed by Duro. I forgot about that. Yeah, that was something I didn't know either. Again, like I said, reading the credits. Yeah, it's crazy. This Batman, you get shot anyway. Mm. Okay. Oh, yep. Yeah. Get over uh, Yeah. First, it's first. Shake him off. I feel like Shake Him Off was first single. It's the first single, Young Bloods. Yeah. First group signed to Ghetto Vision. Yeah, let's see what's that. A Ghetto Vision ain't real no more. Picture that. <laughs> um, AT Aliens re- Oh, wait a minute. Listen to KT, Cat and KP. Yeah. Oh, shit. That was the Bad Boy remix of AT Aliens. Hilarious. Okay. Yeah, I mean, hey, what? It's all your work, man. Come on. It's, yeah, shit. That was the yellow, they were just talking about Yellow Wolf. <laughs> New face, you know Yellow Wolf used to pull up at the Camel Toe Contest at Dance the League. <laughs> By itself. <laughs> By itself, bro. With Betty from uh, Claremont Live. I'm telling you, bro. For real, I used to host the Camel Toe Contest. That's funny as shit. <laughs> yeah, Yellow Wolf used to pull up. Yeah, that's about right. I, yeah, with the crazy ass haircut with the little rat tail shit in the back. Mohawk on What's the side this? shit. Oh, oh yeah. All you right. ain't even talking about the Kendrick shit. Man, listen, that like that's that's the thing that I feel like is like I'm probably like just grateful to be a part of because it's like at the moment it hit and what it stood for, what what it means now for it's like, an anthem now. It, like it's a black song. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like you know it's like that's like a good. Tell them what song you're talking about. Cause oh, they don't know. I'm sorry. All right, there you um, go. by Kendrick Lamar. Um, yeah, it's like. Being a part of that is like that. That actually, I think, is one of the moments where you know how some shit happened. And it's like, oh, this changes shit. Yeah, change trajectory of movements and, and marches and protests, and it changed the face of the anthem during that moment. You know, like when Jesus, my president is black. Yeah. It, it changed, like you said, changed the culture and it went this way. Yeah. So I mean, you know, that's just one of the things. Like you, again, it's like. The, I guess the other part is just like stay, stay, like stay true to you and your people, like the, because like for real, this relationship starts. It's I'm serious to this, you know what I mean? So it's it's you know I think you, you at least twenty. That's twenty. Yeah, so it's like you know, like I feel like you know we all done been through ups and downs, and we done been hot, not hot, you know, and realize that it's no real. Like the hot shit is like. Some somebody made up to make you feel like insecure about if you dope, and once you realize it's like man, just be creative. Like just do the shit that you love doing. Like don't put don't don't you won't you won't even give a fuck about the time. The time goes by. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's funny. No, it's hey man. I was buying anything that had that logo on it, bro. So I've always told you personally, but man, it's just you know. Just no man. Appreciate it. Yeah, man, you're a real one, bro. And, oh, and, I and it. your contributions to the game <laughs> shall not be overlooked. I don't know how many other platforms you've been on, but it's it's an honor and a privilege to have you over here in the trap on 85 South Show. Hey, man. Yeah, I, I appreciate it. I uh, one thousand percent do. Um, I'm I'm like this is one of the ones that I'm like like I like I told my kids I'm like yo I'm gonna be on 85 South like like it's like this some cool shit. I did the same thing before. Yeah, it's, it's stunning on me. Like, exactly. like yeah, yeah, when I used to come, I, I used to do that shit. <laughs> but no, <laughs> but uh, no, nah, man, this shit is like this is this is dope to me. Like, so I appreciate y'all having me up up here, and, you know, kicking it with y'all in the trap. Oh man, like, wait till this shit come out, and then your people gonna hit you and be like, nigga, I ain't know you on that bitch. Why you ain't telling about that time you forgot to get Monica sandwich and she wouldn't? Uh, yeah, for I ain't got no story about getting no, Monica sandwich. No, I'm just fucking with you. Uh, I mean, no disrespect. I would. I mean, if my, my we got to get her here, up here, man. I've been trying to get her up. She said she would come. I'm surprised she ain't been up here. She, she said she, she would come. She, 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 very home in the trap. She at home. I know. She loved ghetto shit. That's my nigga. I, I was hosting her. a shit show one night. She pulled up. 
She had her own microphone. I don't know how the motherfucker was hooked up to the club shit already. She had her own gold microphone. <laughs> she pulled that motherfucker out. She walked in the club with a fur coat on. Every trap nigga in there, damn near Lost crying. I'm talking about they was about to cry. She sung three songs, a flaw, two or three songs, didn't she? Three. three songs. I'm talking about sound like the CD. Yeah, those in there. Nah, I mean she, she, you know, she that, she that, she that one for us, man. Exactly. Like yeah, she, she's a real one. Like she, she's always come through. Like she came through. Like for real, Neptune just did some records on her new project coming out. Like they just dropped one with her and Lil Baby. This some you. Okay. I, what I was about to say is like, and she has always come through. Like when I DJ, like I do these and friends sets, and like at one music festival, <clears> of <throat> the idea that Monica came out on it, and it's just like the the, the way that people love Monica, is like it's like some Tupac level shit. I'm telling you, man. She wanted to. I don't even know what the, how to explain it, but that is that, real. Like, that's all I got. It's like I'm talking about when she walk in the room, everybody loves. They her. start smiling and shit. Like man, the whole shit Some changed. Mo? Like they started talking, calling them mower and shit. I'm like, oh man, like, like people love Monica. For real, for real. Yeah. And you can see her; she be everywhere. And she love man. them back. Like that's that's what like that's what it is. It's like the fact that she genuinely gives love. That's what that's what comes back from that. That's why she got to come up here. She got to. Well, look, man, don't let this be the last time no, you man. come, bro. That's the first time. I appreciate Hold up, it. wait a minute, pause. Don't let this be the last time you come to the trap. Shit. You can't say shit no more. Yeah, I don't, I, who got the craziest process? I don't know who has the craziest process that I work with because everybody has, like, everybody's, like, has their own special shit. Like, like, Tip doesn't write, you know, but people do that. But it's like to to think about when he's doing them other voices and like this was, you know, when he first started doing it, this wasn't like the everyday conversation that he don't write shit down. But I don't, I don't know, man, I think everybody is, oh, what, what, <clears throat> huh? Oh, oh, that's funny. Like, so we, okay, one time I put Courtney Seals in the house. Um, what up? Why you over there ain't say nothing? Yeah, Be Bear, Bello, why don't you might as well come on over here now. You might as well come over here now, bro. He's just chilling. He... Yeah, sure. Okay. So Bear managed Yellow Wolf. Well, we managed them together, and and um, when we were toward the uh, what was it, Radioactive? Oh, there it is. So, so when we were working on Radioactive, we ended up working with Eminem. So I got to call you or him to get uh, Yellow Wolf up here. Yeah. Hit, hit him. Yeah. You don't tell me wolf. to hit him because you know I don't got his number. I got your well, number. Right all right, man. You gonna need, you gonna want at one point, you gonna need to get him up here. Potting from the strip club before they told dancers and leave down to come up here and fuck with me. He gonna know who you talking about, cause he yeah. used to be in there. He know, he gonna know. At, at the camel toe contest and shit, yeah. when he was on his Atlanta shit and he used to pull up. Remember it was me, him, and Jackie Chain and shit, and we was smoking one night and then Yellow Wolf had a lot of weed and he kept rolling up and I was like, bro. Why are we smoking these big ass joints and shit? And it was crazy. Like, whatever. It was a lot. It was way better. Go. He know though. Just tell him. So, <clears throat> watching this dude Eminem, like we were laughing about it, not laughing, but just talking about the fact that he just sits on a treadmill and runs and writes raps, listening to a Walkman. It might be the LL Cool J Walkman. Oh, nigga, what if? What if? What if? What if? What if? <laughs> Wait a minute, bro. How the fuck do you run on the treadmill and write raps at the same time? But like running though, like not Full like speed. Nigga running, like you run. Writing like at the same time. No, you just see it like he's just saying. He's just like listening to the beats, and that's what he's. I guess that was like that's some white dude ass shit. Cause that's just reminding me of a white dude. You remember in high school, he's the one crazy ass white boy used to run down the hall real fast. <laughs> yeah. Damn, Eminem. Maybe he be trying to like make sure he gonna have enough to say to say the shit. Hey, there you go. Damn, that's why he don't fuck up none of that shit. Yeah, cardio. That that might be the other. Y'all can really just tell him he's he's better than most of the people. He don't really have to do all that. He's already. That's how you be better though, right? Like he's a perfectionist. 
Yeah, he's a perfectionist dude. Like, and and this shit you won't hear, I won't hear it, but he hear it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, hey, bro. So that's some genius type shit, bro. Yeah, you got a little genius. Y'all need to genius stop shit. recording your verses so fast. And, and do some cardio. And do some cardio. <clears throat> Yeah, learn, yeah. Learn a lot of, a lot of rappers don't know their lyrics. <laughs> I hear it. Don't be that. I hear it's a thing. You been to the concert. You know the part where they be like, like hey. Oh. Yeah, they don't know. I mean, they doing so many goddamn songs, though, bro. They do, like, how do you remember all them songs? You wrote them? Or did you? Oh. They, they yours. You should. You should know them. You should at least have a general idea. At least a verse where you could be like, all right, cut that shit off. Whew. <laughs> do the part you like. You can't do your part. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, it's different. Like, I mean, but they don't have to. Like, listen. They don't have to. Like, the, the amount of shit that you don't have to learn to come out with a record. Like I think that might be the only like thing I wish that um, there was just more um, interest in learning the craft, like just a little bit more, like because the longevity is just in it. Like you said, like you can get hot by just doing some violent shit, but usually that shit's short. It happens just as quick as it blew. The shit gone mm -hmm. unless you actually put some time in and learn something, like learn a skill in it, like have some fundamentals. Right. But, you know, hey, <coughs> that's, that was my old man river shit for the day. Hey, well, I dropped plenty of old man shit in here. <laughs> this is the 85 South Show. Yes, and we out this bitch, KP. New face. Yeah. yeah. What's up? Hey, man. Appreciate it, Nothing but the dope. You uh, ready? Uh, Hold up. Uh, get a shot. Let's get a photo. Yeah, yeah ho. Let's get a shot. Oh, we're gonna do some shit over here. Breaking news. We got breaking news here. Hi, I'm Carlos Miller live here on the scene at The Trap, and we have some breaking news. We just have a tour date that's been added to the Ghetto Legends Tour. Yes. Hold on, I'm getting more information. That's right, Saturday, December 18th at the Fox Theater in Atlanta, 85 South Show. Yeah, that's right, the return of the Ghetto Legends. Saturday, December 18th at the Fox Theater. Go to 85southshow.com for all your ticket updates. Back to you, Cat.